cold and wet in my shorts down here. You think you could get somebody for me? Guys? Look who's talking. Oh, it's me, Nostalgic Nick, talking about a film you're sure to recognize. Because of who exactly is the one talking? That's right, it's Die Hard's John McClane as a baby. Bruce Willis hilariously voiced baby Mikey, talking to us all with an adult man's voice. It makes sense, right? No, of course not, but it sure is entertaining. Welcome to Do You Remember's Cast Rewind, as we go back to 1989 to check out this wacky film and see what the cast is up to, especially baby Mikey. Which Mikey? How many Mikeys were there? Stay tuned to find out. If you enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you never miss a memory. John Travolta James Ubriaco is the cab driver with a smile that makes knees weak, who unexpectedly gets the task of driving Molly to the hospital when she's going into labor. Uh. Oh, shit. Talk about high stakes in traffic, but it sets them up for quite the relationship. We first saw John at Buchanan High leading the Sweat Hogs on Welcome Back Cotter. His Vinny Barbarino was a standout and he quickly began acting in films like 1976's Carrie. He became a box office darling with his perfect hair and smooth moves in Saturday Night Fever, earning him an Academy Award nomination for Best Actor. And we all know in 1978 that John was catapulted to supersonic fame with the success of Grease. Some 90s hits included 1994's Pulp Fiction alongside Samuel L. Jackson and Face Off with Nicolas Cage in 97. A bit of a psychological thriller where you don't quite know who's who and whose face is on whose head. Wait, you good looking. Yacht. John currently has two films in production, one being Paradise City alongside his little baby Mikey, Mr. Bruce Willis. Today at 68 years old, he hasn't been working as much because he is going through a lot of grief and loss in his personal life. Beginning with his son Jet, who died in 2009 at the age of 16 while on vacation in the Bahamas. But more recently in 2020, his wife Kelly Preston lost her battle with breast cancer. He continues to support the charity that he and Kelly created, the Jet Travolta Foundation, which raises money for children with educational needs. Curse the alley. I need some drugs. Slow down your breathing, you're not in an aerobics class. Molly Jensen was a single, career-driven accountant who was now about to embark on parenthood, taking care of a newborn essentially alone. But first she needed a cab, and at the helm, a man who could help her every need. And Kirsty and John had terrific chemistry together. Allie rose to stardom after replacing Shelley Long on Cheers, playing the more vulnerable Rebecca Howe, earning an Emmy Award and a Golden Globe too. She then starred in the sitcom Veronica's Closet, garnering more attention and award nominations. But she did movies too, like 1995's It Takes Two and 99's Drop Dead Gorgeous. From 2004 to 2007, she was a spokesperson for Jenny Craig, losing a considerable amount of weight before subsequently gaining over 80 pounds back. And through these struggles, she appeared on Kirstie Alley's Big Life, which chronicled her efforts to lose weight. And she kept her feet moving as a contestant on the 12th season of Dancing with the Stars, placing second. Now 71 years old, we last saw her in 2020's TV film, You Can't Take My Daughter. She has two children with her first husband, Frank Hardy from the Hardy Boys, better known as Parker Stevenson. George Seagal. Albert is the married man whom Molly conceives Mikey with. And it's the usual story, he promises he'll leave his wife, but we all know that day will probably never come. I'll never forget that Who's Albert scene with Seagal and Travolta, a nice little tussle by the door. Who are you? I'm his father. Father? Are you the sperm donor? And Seagal is just a phenomenal actor who anchors this film annoyingly well as a smug businessman. He first got his start in the 1950s, his big break co-starring with Yul Brenner in Invitation to a Gunfighter in 1964. 
The following year, he kept it rolling with Ship of Fools and then starring in King Rat, which he got the role after Marlon Brando, Paul Newman, and Steve McQueen all declined. And thank God for that too, because it's one of Seagal's finest performances of his career. Then he got more people's attention being part of Elizabeth Taylor's 1966 classic, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? This became the first movie in Academy Awards history to be nominated for every Academy Award category in which it was eligible, including George Seagal, who lost out to Walter Matthau from The Fortune Cookie. In the 1990s, he shined on the hit show Just Shoot Me, playing the boss having to deal with David Spade's normal antics. And just recently, we got to fall in love with him again, as he played another Albert, Albert Pops Solomon, on the family sitcom The Goldbergs. But George Seagal passed away in March of 2021 at the age of 87 from complications of bypass surgery. Seagal's hobby was playing the banjo and ukulele under the name Bruno Lynch in a new New York jazz band. What a legend. Olympia Dukakis. Rosie was really funny as Molly Jensen's meddling mother. Olympia's career began in the 60s but took off in the 80s thanks to her role in 1987's Moonstruck, which she followed with a star-studded tearjerker, 1989's Steel Magnolias. Then in 95, she played the principal in Richard Dreyfuss's Mr. Holland's Opus. Her final project was a film called Not to Forget, starring Little House on the Prairie's Karen Grassley. But the film is more important for being both the final work of two esteemed actresses, Olympia Dukakis and the one-of-a-kind Cloris Leachman. Dukakis died in May of 2021 at the age of 89 after a period of declining health. Olympia was married to Mad About You's Louis Zorich from 1962 until his death in 2018. They had three kids together who all work in the industry today. Their daughter Christina followed mom and dad into acting too. Abe Vigoda. Grandpa Vincent Ubriaco is James's dad and Mikey's new grandfather. Vigoda's acting career began way back in the 1940s, rising to prominence after starring in a number of Broadway shows. However, it was 1972's The Godfather where he began carving a spot out in Hollywood. Of course, becoming a well-known public figure can invite some mistaken death hoaxes too. He's not dead at all. In fact, he's right here in our control room. Abe? Abe is there in the control room? Yeah. Oh my God, yeah. it is. <laughs> Vigoda was the victim of so many death hoaxes that in 2001, a website was created with one purpose, to report whether Vigoda was alive or dead. Vigoda took it in stride though, as this Barney Miller star was always so likable he got his own spin-off show Fish. But as life goes, Abe Vigoda did die eventually, in January of 2016 at the age of 94 in his sleep. Rest easy, Abe. Twink Kaplan. Rona is Molly's flirty best friend who's with her when they find Albert with a new woman, breaking Molly's heart and sending her into labor. Her Rona did return for the sequel, even getting a love interest this time. But she declined to be in the box office flop of the third installment, Look Who's Talking Now, in 1993. She's probably most known for the 1995 film Clueless. She even served as an executive producer and reprised her Miss Geist in the ABC series of Clueless. Today, Kaplan is 74 years old and still guest starring here and there, most recently in the 2017 FX show Feud, playing a hair stylist for one episode. Bruce Willis. Ah, uh, that is a little more like it. Mikey is the baby and you gotta love him. And Bruce is pretty hilarious giving a matured perspective from a baby's standpoint. His one-liners really are the shining parts of the film. Willis's career began with a breakthrough role on Moonlighting, and he distanced himself from that show when he became a Christmas hero as John McClane in the Die Hard franchise. Other popular credits include 1999's The Sixth Sense and 2005's Sin City. And as it turns out, he isn't just a brilliant actor, but also a gifted singer. He released his debut album, The Return of Bruno, in 1987 and has released two more in 89 and 2001. 
And we're sad to report that Bruce has stepped away from acting entirely due to a recent aphasia diagnosis, a disorder that is caused by brain damage to the area that controls language expression and comprehension. But despite retiring at age 67, he has eight completed films awaiting release in the coming months. We truly hope he remains in good health as he navigates all this out of the limelight. Mikey. He won't eat it, he hates everything. Oh, wrong Mikey. Okay, so how many Mikeys were there? Besides Bruce's inner voice, we had four. Jason Schaller as Mikey as a newborn. Jared Waterhouse as Mikey around four months. Jacob Haynes as a one-year-old Mikey. And finally, Christopher Aiden as Mikey age two. So, did the aging work? I kinda had an issue with it, it seems a bit fast. But let me know in the comments if it was smoother than I believed. It's kinda crazy to think that the kids who played Mikey are now adults, and Bruce Willis who voiced him has now retired. So tell us, who was your favorite character? What was your favorite part? Did anyone enjoy the sequel, Look Who's Talking 2, or the third one, Now? I think the second has its moments, but three is pretty bad even with Danny DeVito and Diane Keaton joining the party. So get in the comments and enjoy your turn talking. As always, give this video a thumbs up if you don't mind, and subscribe to the channel for more nostalgia. But from all of us here at Do You Remember, we want to thank you for watching.